Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Yarn Flakes podcast. My name is Audrey and this is a nitty yarny podcast from the southwest of France. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me for this new episode. I hope you are doing well. I am. I am back with a bang <laughs> because I have um, three <laughs> designs to share with you. Uh, so it's going to be a very... Um, me, I and myself <laughs> episode. Um, but yes, some of which I will have to go uh, quickly over because uh, you either know them or they are only available in a certain uh, place at the moment. But I still wanted to present them to you. And I also do have one more personal summer knitting project uh, that I finished that I wanted to share with you. So yes, uh, you can find timestamps to all the different sections of the podcast in the description down below. So if you want to refer to a specific project or skip anything, feel free to look at that. I also put links to everything that I talk about, the patterns and the yarns that I'm using, as well as links to my social media. Hey, <laughs> So I am going to start with a new pattern release and it is the vest that I'm wearing. So yes, I'm going to say vest, try to be coherent, that is something that is quite, okay, already on a tangent, that is something that is quite funny for non-native English speakers, is that I think that you can, even if I had the most perfect accent, whether British or something, even if I could be that good, the fact that I would use vocabulary from <laughs> one place and then the next, it it's pretty much um, a dead giveaway, right? But let's go with vest. Let's go with vest, sleeveless jumper, uh, Marilla. So I am sorry because the weather is absolutely horrendous um, <laughs> here. Uh, so the video quality is going to be a bit eh? But this is the Marilla vest, uh, vest. And it is a cabled satin sleeve vest with a cable panel on the front and a cable panel on the back which is basically the same cable as the one you have on the side here but repeated across the back yay so this is actually the sleeveless version of a sweater design that i published a few months ago uh, the umbrella sweater and so this was the umbrella sweater, which is uh, a set in sleeve sweater with this cable panel on the front, this cable panel on the back, and again, the cable on the sleeves. And so, as I was designing this, um, before I started picking up for the sleeves, I tried it on to check the body fit, and I really liked how it looked. So I decided to make a sleeveless version, a vest version of this design. And so this is how Marella was born. So construction wise, it's exactly the same. It's set in sleeve, it starts top down. So you start with the garter stitch shoulder that you shape with some short rows. Then you shape the armholes. So you follow this cable panel on the front and the cable panel on the back simultaneously. This is not really <laughs> a difficulty, as the cables there are simpler here than they are on Umbrella, which was already not super difficult, but here you only have very small uh, crossings, only this one is a bit larger, but it's fairly easy and rare. Every other row is a rest row, which means you knit the knit stitches, purl the purl stitches, etc. You uh, basically on the back, since it's the same cable motif like this, it's easy for you to uh, figure out which row you're on and what you need to do. And uh, yeah, so you knit the front and the back to the armholes, then you join in the round with some stockinette on the side and you knit the body in the round downwards. So this is like umbrella, this is a panel of cable and uh, basically it's the same across all sizes and with uh, the larger sizes you just have more stockinette for several reasons. Um, the main one is that um, it's a bit of a, a choice that you have to make. Uh, some designs, it's obvious that it works if you uh, increase the size of the motif itself. And I usually like to do this, but here I found that if I change the cable panel, 
and I widened it somehow, it would have looked fairly different. I could have maybe repeated this one here to the side, but then it's not a panel anymore. <laughs> and um, yeah, for me personally, the design would have been changed significantly. So this is why I chose to have a stock in that side, um, because it also allows me to place bust starts. So in the pattern, if you um, have a larger bust and you notice that your front tends to ride up, so it's not everyone who has that problem, but if that's your case, you can do some short rows across the front and basically this is where they fall and this fixes that problem. <laughs> and also, if you would like to have a more fitted vest and not wear like a shirt underneath or something, you can easily add waist shipping here on the um, stockinette side. So that's the advantage of it being a panel. Um, have a bit more freedom with that and um yeah the hem i'm gonna up and down like at the church so <laughs> i um made a split hem for this one and you can see again the garter stitch details that you also do when you pick up for stitches for the neckline and for the sleeve edges so yes that's it for morella and uh, so the idea was that the two designs would be um, complementary and basically you can take one cable panel and put it on the other one. <laughs> so uh, it's the same basic pattern with some minor changes, but basically if you want a full sweater with the sleeve, you can take this cable, but you prefer these cables, you can take those cables and plop, use the chart from this in the sweater pattern. Um, as far as the sleeves go, you can keep the same sleeve um, cable because it's actually a wider version of this, see? So it matches. Uh, but if you want, you can also just transfer this on the sleeve. It will just be slightly thin thinner, but uh, that's not an issue. And um, vice versa. You can take the cables from, uh, from Umbrella and put them in the sleeveless vest pattern if you just want the in information for the uh, sleeve edgings etc. So yeah, the goal was really to have designs that would work together. And so I have set up a promotion if you get both so that you don't have to pay both at full price. Um, if you get the set, the second one would be 50% off. So that should work automatically. And uh, now sometimes the Ravelry promotion system is a bit um, because uh, you have very variables that sometimes it means it does not work. So if it does not work for, for you, um, it might be because you used a promotion code before to get the other pattern or some other reason. Uh, don't worry, just send me a message on Ravelry and I will um, make sure that it works for you. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that is the promotion that is available via Ravelry that if you get the duo, the second one will be 50% off. Um, so that's that. <laughs> and um, as far as the yarn goes, so I used yarn from Les Petites Potions, which is a French indie dyer, which is someone uh, a dyer I really like and I consider my friend. Um, she um, gifted this yarn f to me for, I don't remember when, <laughs> I think it was after I sort of helped her or bullied her into letting me help her at a yarn festival a year ago or so. And um, yeah, she gifted me the skins to make this. This is her DK Yak base. So it's a blend of merino, silk and yak. The color is not uh, very accurate here with the lighting, I'm sorry. Uh, but I did manage on the pattern pictures to get it a little bit better. Um, it's a much darker brown, burgundy wine color. Um, basically with the yak it adds a lot of depth because the color, the base color of yak is like a grey brown uh, fiber and so this is the colorway terre brûlée, so burnt earth <laughs> and I think it matches pretty well and yeah with the silk it has some drape and shine as well but it still has a very good elasticity because it's mainly merino and the decay weight is really round and plump 
which works super well for the cables because they just really stand out. So that's nice. And yeah, I really enjoyed knitting this. So I'm making this as a, a vest um, pattern, autumnal pattern to be worn over a shirt or over a dress or whatever. But um, you can totally make it in a more summery friendly yarn and uh, have it as a, just a tank top and it will work uh, just well. Maybe just make the sleeve edgings a little bit smaller and uh, it will work as a tank top as well if that's what you would like to make it. Um, but yeah. That's it for Marella. So, like I said, there is the coupon code to get the duo, but Marella on its own to celebrate its release is also 15% off until Sunday with code Marella. So everything will be written in the description down below. Uh, they should work. <laughs> the two promotions should work together. You just have to buy the patterns separately. So if you buy Marella first with the 15% off, and then you get Umbrella. Umbrella should also work and be at 50% off. Um, and I think it works the other way around. <laughs> like if you already have Umbrella and you get this with the uh, release sale discount, it should also work. But again, <laughs> the setting up of Ravelry promotions is sometimes a bit unclear. <laughs> so in case it doesn't um, work automatically for you, please uh, just let me know and I will make it... Um, make it work somehow. <laughs> we will figure it out. Um, but yeah, that's it <laughs> for uh, Morella. I hope you're gonna like it and uh, if you were in the mood to start planning for more uh, autumnal knits, there it is. Um, I uh, have two other designs that I want to show you and uh, one I will quickly go over because you already know of it and basically um, in, in spring, I uh, was very lucky to publish a design in Making Stories issue 5. Um, so this was the Molecule Show. So it is here. And yep, it is this show, which is the fingering weight show with a textured motif uh, on the body and then a dropped stitch border. And yes. It uses two skeins of yarn and it was knitted with Maison Corlaine, which is a French anti dyer uh, BFL Gotland yarn in um, Cerchi <laughs> colorway. Uh, and uh, yes, so this was published in the magazine in spring, but it is now available individually. So if you really liked Molecule, but uh, you, you didn't get the magazine, uh, Molecule is now also available individually on Ravelry and, uh, and Payhip if you want to get just the shawl design. So yeah, this was the little announcement. It's a fairly easy um, design. Um, if you, like, I know some French people watch the English version of the podcast. Um, the pattern has been translated to French. And uh, yes, you have written and charted instructions on the pattern, etc. So yeah, I am going to move on. To the last design which also I don't have anything to show you because it also involves a magazine I have been very lucky uh, and this is a French knitting magazine magazine so I just want to quickly show it to you because um, I wanted to present to you the design that I created for it so this is slow magazine which is a French independent uh, knitting magazine which publishes patterns from a uh, French speaking indie designer and I have designed some lace socks for it. And these are the Agrippa socks. So they're a fairly easy lace um, with, um, with twisted ribbing and uh, simple uh, ankles and a pico cuff. They're a knitted cuff down. So yeah. Um, I just wanted to let you know, just in case you have seen this come around and you see them um, perhaps on Ravelry if the magazine chooses to publish the Ravelry pattern page. Um, yeah, as of now, the magazine is only available in French, but uh, if you do like the little socks, um, they will be available on their own in a few months. I don't remember exactly um, how long, but I will eventually translate them into English as well, of course, when I have the the right back. So yeah, I just wanted to 
show them to you. And if you do speak French, uh, I highly recommend the magazine. They had some uh, tough times getting it to uh, be created, but it's a really lovely magazine with uh, quite a few really pretty, pretty designs. One of those is this. This is one of my faves. It's a A line. Um, tank top designed by Armel Robert and it has some lace at the sides and it has a really interesting dent here at the front and yeah uh, it's a really lovely magazine with lots of editorial content as well um, but yes um, as of now it's only published in French and the second of my favorite designs is actually the cover the short cover which has a nice delicate twisted ribbon cable detail and eyelets on the shawl body. It's the cover design here. This is a shawl from Mademoiselle Petroni. And yeah, so I just wanted to let you know of this just in case you actually <laughs> understand French. This is a, yeah, uh, a really nice, well, um, deserving of the weight. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, the creators of the magazine had quite the trouble um, to um, publish it, to get it delivered, but uh, yeah, it's quite impressive that in the end the result bears no mark of all the trouble that they had to go through because it is a, a really good production and fingers crossed that they can actually work more calmly <laughs> in the future. There were... Um, originally, there was originally plans to have it be an, have an English version as well, but we will see what happens with that. But yes, yeah, so that's it for my uh, own <laughs> promotion moment. And let's move on to something a little bit less um, egotistic and egocentric. Maybe uh, the words don't have the same meaning in English and in French, so I think I'm not saying what I mean to say. But... I finished a personal summer knit uh, project. So this is the Four Quarters Top by Julie Robinson and it was published in the spring uh, issue of Pom Pom of this year, I think. And yes, I finished it. So this is a really fun hoop. I I'm, keeping, I'm keeping it on a hanger so that you can sort of see the actual shape. <laughs> So this was a really fun knit to make with a very interesting construction. Basically, you start here at the bottom of the upper body. Um, you work the body with some short rows here to make a pass start. Then you start the v-neck shaping, you add the sleeve, you go over, and then you knit the back down. And then you pick up stitches here and you work the tie with an interesting shaping as well with short rows and then decreases until it is the width of the tie. And then you do exactly the same for the other side and then you uh, seam together here at the center front on the sides and here at the center back and you have a t-shirt. So uh, it was really fun to work. I really like my color combination even though like when I washed it, it didn't bleed, but then it this was folded a bit, scrunched up like this. And I think uh, that's why with the humidity and thing, it's sort of made a little pinky thing here, but that's okay. I used Katya linen, which is a blend of cotton and linen, which really smoothed out when I blocked it. Um, as I was knitting it, it felt really like more on the heavy linen side with like the ir irregular fabric um, but when you wash it it gets so lovely and drapey and it smooths out the fabric quite well so yeah if you are looking for linen cotton blend and you like the more drapier flowy ones this is a good idea for an affordable summer yarn and Yes, so it was really fun to work on. Uh, it's not the easiest knit to figure out how to wear. Um, I um, I wanted, and I think this is definitely what I, I should do, I wanted to wear it over a dress 
but I don't have a um, convenient, uh, the proper type of dress yet. I, I know exactly which one I want. It's a not perfect linen dress, which if you're not aware, is uh, a brand that, of Lithuanian, a Lithuanian family that makes um, hand-sewn linen garments. Uh, they have a Etsy shop and they make really beautiful linen uh, dresses and jumpsuits and etc. And I really love their clothing. Um, and yeah, they have a, a tank dress, like a sleeveless dress with a little bit of a higher waist, not fully empire waist, but a little bit still higher. And it's like wide enough for my uh, body shape. But I think it will work really well with this on top. Um, yeah, I just can't <laughs> get it right now. Because <laughs> uh, uh, of course their pieces are handmade. So it's a little bit um, of a budget. Uh, but I know exactly um, which one I want and which uh, color I want. And I think it will work really well with this on top. Because even though I like how it can look with the high-waisted jeans or pants. The thing is, I can never find high-waisted jeans that are high enough, <laughs> basically. For me, they always end up just under my belly button, even if they're the most high-waisted thing in the universe. For me, it's too low, <laughs> because my like torso is weird and my waist is really high. And um, so, yeah, when you wrap this around uh, the ties basically when you wrap them around your waist and there is always like a little empty spot and I can never get it right with jeans or pants so I think it will definitely work much better on the dress for me and uh, yeah you can make the body longer if you want I did that already I added three centimeters basically before you start the v-neck shaping you have a bit where you knit straight and this is where you can knit it longer uh, in case you want to be sure that it's not too short here on the on the back um, but um because on the back you just had this <laughs> so yeah then the ties come around and you you have to arrange them a bit which is why i think it will be much less fast and very nice over a dress because i don't have to make sure that the ties cover my back um, like I wanted them to. So yeah, this was a really nice project. I'm really happy with my color combo. And yeah, I do have quite a lot of other summer knits that I want to do, but I already have too many works in progress because I casted on so many summer projects to fight my <laughs> anxiety. And now I have too many, so they're creating anxiety. So that's great. <laughs> Um, but yes, I don't have a work in progress to show you because well, I was away for a couple of weeks in Romania and um, the work in progress that I took there, well, I finished it. I also finished a second one. So I finished two shawls in two weeks. Um, they were rather uh, small ones, but uh, yes. So I have made no more progress on uh, my other work in progress. And my current design whip, it's still the mystery knit along, which I have not finished, even though the pattern is supposed to be for sale in a week and a half. But um, it's okay because I know what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, no, the, the design is, uh, is already uh, finished and completed. I just need to actually complete the sample, which I will probably do very quickly. But this means that now I don't have any um, work in progress to show you. But I believe that I will in the next episode in a couple of weeks or so. You will definitely see more needles. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching this. I am trying really hard to make shorter episodes and to be more efficient. And I managed to. <laughs> After saying for months that I, this is what I was trying to do, now I can do it. Um, so yes, um, I really want to try and make like more efficient um, episodes uh, without losing any of the information that I'm trying to uh, to give to you. So yeah, I'm not saying that um, sometimes we won't have hour long things, but as of now, this is nice and easy, and it will be much more manageable for me to do it this way. So yeah, hopefully. 
you enjoyed and I will see you next time. Have a nice rest of the day, evening, week, <laughs> whatever applies and yes, see you soon. Bye!